Over 700 islands, 2,887 islanders, 700,000 sheep, and more than a million penguins. And this is their army, the Falkland Islands Defence Force, or FIDF, a 40-strong reservist unit made up of mechanics, tax inspectors, builders. Al is a world-renowned SEAL scientist. So we're a locally raised military unit made up of Fortnite Islanders and people that live here. We train to be a uh, light infantry unit. Rain, 300. Do all the, uh, the normal sort of light infantry um, stuff. stuff. <laughs> On the other side of East Falkland lies Mount Pleasant, home to the British base and a few hundred personnel stationed here to protect the islands. Onward. You'd be forgiven for asking, what's the point of this tiny army? But though they are small, they're also essential. Go on. We're very much seen as local advisors that understand the country and the terrain uh, and bring those skills when we work alongside UK forces from Mount Pleasant uh, to help them do their task. It's a unique terrain, quite uh, arduous environment. Climate is, can be quite challenging at times, as I'm sure you found out during your time here. Uh, so we bring a lot of local knowledge and we also understand what looks out of place. Uh, so in terms of reconnaissance and surveillance, things stand out quite quickly to us that you know, we understand isn't natural here, so we can use those skills to help identify um, targets quickly. We are locals, we care about this place, um, we care very much about this place, um, we know a lot about it. From the Falkland perspective, although we're obviously very proud to be British, uh, we're also proud to be um, a f almost self-sufficient nation um, and being part of the FIDF, um, however small that might be, is a really po important part of that. The FIDF are also perhaps one of the best equipped reserve forces. Internal one. In the past 40 years, the fortunes of the Falklands have changed. Thanks to fishing, tourism and the prospects of oil, their per capita income is on a par with Norway or Qatar. The FIDF are funded by their own government, not the MOD, and are well equipped with heavy weaponry, armoured vehicles and quad bikes. They're trained by elite marines and send soldiers to the UK to gain further skills. It's not quite how the force used to be when veteran of 1982 Brian Summers joined up after his 16th birthday. We did right up until 1982 have very much a dad's army image. I eventually went on to command the, uh, the force for 11 years and it was very difficult getting equipment. When I first applied for a Land Rover, uh, no, I couldn't have a Land Rover but I could share one with the post office. But now, yet yeah, very, very well equipped. The war is very much, is a really important thing for us. Um, and I'm very proud to be able to defend the Falklands in my own small way. Is it something that worries you? Oh, that's a big question. Um, Argentina does pose a very real threat, um, but Britain has given us a lot of support, a lot of strength. If an attack was to happen again, we are in a very good position to defend ourselves. Absolutely willing to lay down whatever we need to to, to defend the islands. A bit different to your day job? A bit different to the day job, yeah. Day job is very much about uh, seals and seabirds and using little GPS tags to track where they go. We're very conscious of what happened in 1982 and the sacrifice and the effort that were made to give us our freedom. And it's really important we protect and maintain that freedom. You know, we're, we're living under the the government and the country of our choosing. And whilst we'll never defend ourselves uh, alone, it's really important that um, the UK sees and, and Falkland Islands see that you know, there's Falkland Islanders here and people living here that are very willing and very happy to contribute to our own safety and security. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.